This tutorial shows you how to add a sense of touch to your organisms. Animate Lab includes contact sensors, but they only provide a binary data that tells whether it's contacting something else in the environment. The sense of touch is much more sophisticated than just knowing if a contact has occurred in some large volume. Skin contains numerous small receptors that can detect a variety of stimuli, including pressure. Each of these receptors detects pressure stimuli within a surrounding field which is called the receptive field of that sensory neuron. Typically, the receptive fields from adjacent sensory neurons overlap. At first, this may seem odd. You might be asking, wouldn't that confuse your brain because you'd be getting a touch signal at multiple locations instead of isolated to a point? In fact, as in so many other cases, nature's produced an elegant design that's not entirely obvious at first glance. In fact, having overlapping receptive fields like this helps improve the resolution that can be achieved compared to just having single, isolated sensory areas. The reason for this is true is that the sensory network for skin uses lateral inhibition to enhance the contrast of sensory signals. The network in part A of this figure doesn't use lateral inhibition and you can see that after the secondary relay station the signal is so diffused that it's almost useless. But the network in part B does use lateral inhibition. After its secondary relay station inhibition causes a peak in the firing rate at the origin of the stimulus along with an inhibition of the neighboring neurons. This enhances the contrast of the signal and makes it easier to discriminate two touch stimuli that are nearby. Another way that pressure sensors are different from the basic contact sensors is that they're sensitive to the amount of pressure. A contact sensor will always signal one no matter how much force is being applied. But a pressure sensor can be configured to produce different firing frequencies depending on the amount of pressure being exerted. So pressure sensors are responsive to both the distance of the applied force from the center of the receptive field and the magnitude of the force. This means that a strong force applied at the edge of a receptive field can produce the same firing frequency in a sensory neuron as a small force that's applied near the center of the field. It's the response of all the neurons interacting that allows the brain to decode where the force was applied and the relative strength. We're going to build a simple slice of virtual skin in this tutorial and then we'll use a motorized probe to poke the skin at various points to see the neural response. We'll not be adding any complicated neural structures in this tutorial like lateral inhibition. You can do this easily if you want but for now we're mainly concerning ourselves with showing you how to use touch receptive fields. Let's begin by creating a new project. A copy of this project is located at C, Program Files, Animate Lab, Tutorials, Sensory Systems. Please choose where you want to create this project and then name it Touch Receptive Fields. Once the project is created, add a new organism. Name it Skin. Then move it up slightly by setting its Y value to 5 centimeters. Next let's add some ground for our skin sample to sit on. Then open the body editor for the skin. Add a new root box object and call it skin. Set its length to 50 centimeters and its width to 20 centimeters. Now set the default joint type to prismatic and add a new box. Call it arm. This will be an armature that will move back and forth along the skin. Change its color to blue. Set each dimension of its size to 5 centimeters. Set the rotation to 0. And set the local location to be 0, 25, and negative 5 centimeters. Then select the joint. Name it Skin to Arm. Set its location to 0 and its maximum limit to 25. Set its minimum limit to negative 25. 
Now change the default part type to a cone and add that item to the arm. Call it pointer. Set its color to green and change the lower radius to 2 centimeters. Rotate it around the x-axis to negative 90 degrees so the point is down. Set the local x and z location to 0 centimeters. Now select the prismatic joint and name it arm to pointer. Set the maximum to 20 centimeters and the minimum limit to 0. Select the two prismatic joints and make sure their motors are enabled. Then let's make sure we didn't freeze our root body. If you freeze a body that you're using to sense touch, then your receptive fields won't work. When you freeze a body, it disables all of its dynamics, including processing of forces. So this flag must be false for us to be able to detect forces being applied to the skin. Next, we're going to add a series of motor velocity stimuli that will lower the pointer to poke the skin, then leave it there for a moment, then raise it up, and then move it over just a little, then we'll repeat the whole process. We'll be doing this five times, so we need to add five motor velocity stimuli to the arm to pointer joint. This is the one that raises and lowers the pointer. These five stimuli will be the ones that lower the pointer at different time periods. Call them down 1 to down 5. Set all of them to have a velocity of 5 centimeters per second. The first is active between 0 and 5 seconds. The second between 8 and 13 seconds. The third between 16 and 21 seconds. The fourth between 24 and 29 seconds. And the fifth between 32 and 37 seconds. Now add four more motor velocity stimuli to that joint to raise the pointer up. Name them up one to up four. Set them all to have a velocity of negative 5 centimeters per second. The first is active between 5 and 7 seconds. The second between 13 and 15 seconds. The third between 21 and 23 seconds. And the fourth between 29 and 31 seconds. Next, we need to add stimuli to move the pointer over. Add four more motor velocity stimuli to the skin to arm joint. Name them over 1 to over 4. Set all of them to have a velocity of 2.5 centimeters per second. The first is active between 7 and 8 seconds. The second between 15 and 16 seconds. 
the third between 23 and 24 seconds, and the fourth between 31 and 32 seconds. Now let's move the camera to get a better view. Set the elevation to 5 centimeters, offset to 75 centimeters, and the rotation to 90 degrees. Now let's run the simulation. Uh oh, let's try that again. Now we have a probe that pokes the skin at several different points along a line. Next, we need to add some sensory neurons. Open the behavioral editor. We'll be using some tonic neurons. Go ahead and add six of them. Then set their intrinsic current to 5 nanoamps. This will cause the neurons to fire at half their maximum firing frequency. Then label them A1 to A6. Now we need to connect the receptive fields to the sensory neurons. Go back to the body editor and switch to the receptive field mode. When you're in this mode and have selected an object, it will show an array of small green dots on the surface of the object. These are the centers of the receptive fields. You can change the number of receptive fields by setting the field distance. This determines how far away the center of each receptive field is located. So if you change this to 10 centimeters, 5 centimeters, or 1 centimeter, then you can add more receptive fields to the surface. Let's set this value to be 10 centimeters. You can select a receptive field by clicking on it with the mouse. The selected receptive field has a red gradient of color that surrounds it. This gradient shows you the size of the receptive field. You can change the size by adjusting the width parameter of the field gain. The field gain determines the size of the receptive field. Right now the field is very large, so let's reduce the parameter to reduce the field size. We'll be using a size of 250 for this tutorial. You can determine what value to use for the field gain by either using a value that looks good on the body or by actually using the equation and the size of the body to determine the size of your receptive field. Another major property of the receptive field is the current gain. When a force is applied to the body, it will first determine how far away it is from the center of the receptive field. The gain function is then used to determine a scaling percentage. The magnitude of the applied force is multiplied by this percentage to get a perceived force for this receptive field. If the force is applied directly over the center of the field, then the gain factor will be 100% and all of that force will be perceived and used in the current gain. The further away the force is from the center of the field, the more of a reduction of the magnitude of that force that's perceived for use in the current gain. The current gain determines how much current is injected into any sensory neurons that are associated with that receptive field. It converts perceived force into a current. 
So if a force of 10 newtons is perceived, then in this case it will inject 10 nanowaps of current into any of the neurons associated with the receptive field. Remember that perceived force is the actual force scaled by the distance from the center of the field. So even if a force of 10 newtons is actually being applied, if that force is located far away from the receptive field, it may not be perceived at all. This allows the receptive field to be sensitive to both the distance the force is from the center of the field and the magnitude of the force that's applied. Also, you can control how much each receptive field overlaps by controlling the field distance and the size. For touch sensations to be transduced into neural firing, you must associate a receptive field with one or more neurons. This is a many-to-many -many relationship. This means that you can have one receptive field stimulate hundreds of neurons, or a hundred receptive fields mapping onto one neuron. More commonly, one receptive field will stimulate one sensory neuron. You could figure this by clicking on a receptive field to select it, and then selecting a neuron from the drop-down list. Then hit Add. This adds a new neuron vertex pair to the list. You can also remove selected pairs, or clear all the pairs. Once you add a pair, this means that any current generated for that receptive field will be injected into that sensory neuron. Set the upper output value of the gain to be 10 nanoamps, then add receptive field pairs to associate our six neurons to the six receptive fields down the center of the skin. Now let's add a data array chart so we can watch the responses of our sensory neurons. Open the data configuration dialog and set it to have six columns and one row. Then add each of our neurons to the data array. Set the max value of the bar coloring to 1 and the min value to 0. Set the Y auto scale to min max so we can manually set the axis scale. Set its max value to 1 and min to 0. Now run the simulation. Our neurons start out firing at half their maximum frequency. When the probe comes down, it's directly over the top of one of the receptive fields. This produces maximum firing in that sensory neuron, with very little response from the other neurons. When it moves over, we still get a strong response from that neuron, but we're also impinging on the neighboring receptive field, causing it to begin firing more strongly. When it moves again, it's halfway between the two fields, and both neurons respond with equal firing rates. Then, finally, it moves closer to the next field. Let's rotate the chart to match up with the direction of movement of the probe. Now let's decrease the field size and see how this affects the firing rates. Change the width to 500. This time the response from the neighboring neurons are reduced. Change the width to 1000 and try it again.
change the width back to 250 and let's see how changing the current gain affects the response. Set the slope parameter C to be 0.1 nanoamps. Then change the upper output to match with 1 nanoamps. This time the responses of all the neurons are reduced because less current is being injected into them for the same amount of force. Now set the current gain values back to their original settings. Next, let's see how the receptive fields respond to different forces being applied to the skin. Disable the motors on both of the prismatic joints so we can pick the pointer up and move it using our mouse. Then go back and disable all the stimuli that are moving the pointer. Run the simulation again. Now the pointer falls down onto the skin and we get a much lower response. Before, the motors were actively pushing the point into the skin, producing a lot of force. But when the cone falls onto the skin, the force is determined solely by the weight of the cone. However, we can grab onto the pointer and pull it down manually using our mouse. When we do this, you can see that the stronger we pull on the pointer, the more force that we apply and the greater the response of the neurons. When we move the pointer to different points on the skin, different sets of neurons respond. There are different classes of pressure sensitive cells in the skin. One of the big differences between these classes is the rate of adaptation to pressure. A fast adapting sensory neuron will fire rapidly when the stimulus is first applied and then its firing will taper off as it adapts to the new situation. Slowly adapting sensory neurons though continue firing essentially as long as the stimulus is present. The type of neurons we're modeling are slowly adapting. We can change this though by changing the properties of our neurons. Go back and re-enable the motor stimuli Go back and select the neurons and then set the intrinsic current to zero. Now our neurons won't respond until they're activated by pressure. Then run the simulation again. Now we only get firing when the probe hits the surface, but notice that the firing remains steady for as long as the probe is applying pressure. Now select the neurons again and set the relative accommodation to 1 and leave the accommodation time constant as 30 milliseconds. This will cause the firing threshold of the neurons to change so they can adapt to their new firing frequencies. Run the simulation again. That one adapted a bit too fast 
Let's change the accommodation time constant to 600 milliseconds. Now, when the pressure is applied, the sensory neuron begins firing. But as it does, it rapidly adapts to the new firing rate and it drops back down to zero pretty fast. Let's make it adapt a little bit slower by setting the accommodation time constant to 1.5 seconds instead. This time it takes a little longer for the cells to quit responding to the stimuli. Now we have sensory neurons that respond to pressure, but then adapt and slowly quit firing for a constant stimulus. This tutorial has demonstrated how to add pressure sensitive touch receptive fields to your organism. This allows them to have a sense of touch. However, before letting you go, I should mention a major limitation of the touch system. The problem with the touch system is that the physics engine is always trying to minimize the number of contact points between objects interacting in the virtual world. If it tried to have forces for every point of contact, it would be enormously expensive computationally. So what does this mean for us? Unfortunately, it's a rather large problem. Let's say you set a cup down on the palm of your hand. When this happens, then all of the sensory neurons underneath the cup would detect contacts and the pressure of the cup. Lateral inhibition networks would then be used to detect the edges of the cup, and you could use that to try and recognize the type of object sitting on your hand. In the virtual world, though, when you set a cup on some skin, it will usually generate, at most, four contact points. So all of the sensory neurons inside the area and most of them along the edge won't be stimulated. This will have large and rather unfortunate consequences for trying to use touch sensory in information for shape recognition and for determining the area that's being touched. This means that right now you'll only really be able to use receptive fields to determine how much pressure was exerted to some point on the surface and roughly where the touch occurred. You'll not be able to use it for fine tactile discrimination. We have plans to address this issue but they're still in the pipeline.